If we had two objects in contact with one another in an isolated system, and one of these objects had a higher temperature than the other, energy would be transferred from the higher temperature object to the lower temperature object. Now, of course, we know this from everyday experience, but it's the name we give to this energy that is important here. So this transferred energy is defined as heat. And this heat energy will slowly reduce until the two objects reach thermal equilibrium. In other words, they reach the same temperature. But it's also important to emphasize here that objects do not possess heat. Heat is simply the transfer of energy when there's a temperature difference between two objects in contact with one another. And heat is normally indicated by the symbol Q and has units of joules. And it has units of joules because it's an energy transfer. So what's happening on the microscopic or molecular scale when heat is being transferred between two objects of different temperatures? So in the last lesson, we defined temperature as being a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in some substance. So all molecules or atoms of any substance, whether that be a gas, liquid or solid, will be in motion. For a metal, in its solid state, its atoms are locked in a crystalline structure. But these atoms will have the ability to vibrate as if they are attached to springs. The faster these atoms vibrate, the higher their kinetic energy is. Because remember, kinetic energy is equal to half multiplied by the mass times the velocity squared. The higher this average velocity, the higher the temperature. And if the velocity of the atoms are very high, the atoms can break free from these attractive springs and flow around. This is when the metal turns into a liquid. Molecules of liquid and gases are more free to flow and move around, but the temperature of the gas or liquid is still defined by the average kinetic energy of their molecules. So we have two solid objects in contact with one another. The atoms of the low temperature object are on average moving or vibrating less vigorously than the atoms in the high temperature object. So when the objects are in contact with one another, the atoms with the higher kinetic energy at this boundary here will collide with the low kinetic energy atoms in the lower temperature object. This collision process transfers kinetic energy, making these atoms vibrate more vigorously. And because these atoms are locked together in a lattice, this kinetic energy continues to traverse deeper into the lower temperature object. This is the process of conduction and also the transfer of heat energy from the high temperature object to the low temperature object. This process continues until the average kinetic energy of atoms of both objects are the same. In other words, when we have a state of thermal equilibrium. Now thermal radiation will also have an effect here. And thermal radiation is the transfer of heat energy by electromagnetic radiation. And I've spoken about this in more detail in another lesson when I talked about the Stefan Boltzmann law. In a previous lesson, we discussed the conservation of energy in a closed or isolated system. And the conservation of energy states that the total energy in an isolated system remains constant. In other words, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can change form. In this same lesson, I gave the example of a simple pendulum that swings back and forth forever due to a lack of friction from the pivot and from air molecules. Once we gave the pendulum gravitational potential energy by lifting it in the gravitational field, the pendulum would convert gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy and back again. What we should consider now 
is the internal energy of the air in this system, the material that makes up the pendulum and the material that makes up the pivot. The frictional forces and the air resistance cannot really be ignored here. The initial gravitational potential energy we add into the pendulum will convert into kinetic energy as the pendulum falls, but some of this kinetic energy will be absorbed as internal energy. And this is because the pendulum will need to use kinetic energy to push past the air molecules as it's swinging backwards and forwards and also overcome the friction in the pivot. So some of the kinetic energy from the pendulum's motion will be transferred into kinetic energy of the gas molecules in the air and kinetic energy in the pendulum and pivot itself. This will mean that the air and the pendulum itself will heat up slightly. And that means if we add up the change in potential energy, kinetic energy and internal energy, they will sum to zero. And what this means is the reduction in our potential energy and kinetic energy is equal to the positive change in the internal energy of the entire system. Which also means that there's been zero change in the total energy in the system.